Well, it's All Star Weekend coming up. Jesus loves the world. You like that? You like that? You like that? I like that. You like that? You gotta like that, right? You're listening to the Clubhouse. That's C H M R. Welcome. Well, uh, we're uh, we're a little lonely this week. We are. Oh, I forgot to cue the hip hop. Oh, <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Gotta have that. It makes oh. us comfy in here. Oh yeah. We are lonely this week. Mitch is not sitting directly across me, but Katie is. Yeah. I can. Uh, that means I can pick on Mitch for his uh, failed uh, his failed football picks. Yes, I want to trace back last week. We did a little um, something we usually do. It's like it's like bold predictions from Josh Greeley, or and we did it for both sides. Yeah. And it was the um, NFL playoffs determining the two teams that are going to make it to the Super Bowl. Mitch chose the Cards and the Patriots. Yeah. And, and I Josh the chose the exact opposite. And the Panthers. And I was right. Josh was right. Uh, the big surprising one though was the Broncos. Mm-hmm. Pats game, the Broncos Pats one. Yeah, yeah. I personally thought the Panthers were going to annihilate the Cardinals. Like I, the Cardinals did have, I, they could have surprised. Yeah, definitely. But the Panthers have been so dominant all season long. Cam Newton is just probably one of the most dangerous. He's a representative of this program. Oh yeah, this program. He's a friend of the program. Yeah, we yeah. can only hope. Do you think he's listening to us on his I, lunch break? Oh, definitely. <laughs> he's just jamming out. He's jamming out to our music and everything. And he was very happy when the hip-hop wasn't played at the beginning. <laughs> no, very sad, actually. Because very. he would have been dabbing to it. <laughs> you know, um, D- uh, Bufflin, he did the dab when he scored yesterday. Yeah. The dab is intruding it's, every sport. It's happening. Every sport, it's coming in. And <laughs> you see he, it? You first see those dance moves that are sweeping the nation when... You know how you have... Center Ice as well as Game Time and all those apps. And whenever yeah. it shows the kids on the screen, they're oh, yeah. always doing the dance. They're always whipping. They're always nay nay. Now they're always dabbing. Now they're always dabbing. Yeah. What's the the one that took uh, everything by storm last year? It was like the mixing it up, the stir. Oh, the James Harden thing, yeah. Yeah. The stirring it up. He, he stopped doing that. Yeah, because he, he, he got cursed by... Uh... Kourtney Kardashian? No. It was by uh, there was another rapper. I can't remember. I can't remember oh, his name. Yeah. It escapes me. The rap god. It's not. Oh yeah, yeah. That was his tagline. That, yeah. that was his thing. Oh. And he, I think he cursed. He cursed. It was in the playoffs last, like last year. He cursed James Harden in the right. Rockets, yeah, he was on and the they side. Ended up yeah, and he's been cursed. I think he has three of those curses. Because there's one, the Kourtney Kardashian one. Yeah. I don't know where else that applied. Like what happened with her before. But yeah. there's that one. There's this one. He's cursed someone before. I can't remember who. It was. And he is getting them right. Like yeah. he does it, and it's <laughs> weird. Man. And he gets in, and he's given the, he's given his blessing to the Raptors. Really? He said he loves he likes Toronto sports. Weird. Yeah. He's. You know where this Toronto guy's sports. from? I don't know. I get the. I See, get, I feel bad. I, I get don't, the feeling he's from Cleveland. I just I don't know a lot about him, so I feel bad that I don't know too much about him. He's gonna curse me now <laughs> with his little stirring thing. Yeah. I think one of the reasons why. James Harden may have stopped that is because um, the Blue Jays all started doing it. Yeah. And like, he's like, man, it's not my thing anymore. And all like all Toronto sports, man, the Raptors, some of the boys of the Raptors were doing it too. And, oh, yeah? Yeah. But they were allowed. They were blessed. Blessed. So did you say you, you think it's this guy's thing first, the stir thing? I think it was, yeah. yeah. That's, why he, that's why he started doing that. That's why he cursed James Harden because he used it without his permission. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> Well, there's no more stir in the pot. I've noticed that as a Rockets fan. There's very, there's very yeah. little of it. James Harden's like, damn. Yeah, he like... Because it got them last year in the playoffs. Like, he'll pull his spoon up and he's like, ah, put this back. I can't do it. Put I this can't. back in my pocket. I can't stir it up. I'm not allowed. Could start doing the Westbrook thing. The two pistols and... To see... Ulster them. That's a cool one. Wasn't there a big block on Westbrook? Did he play uh, Porzingis recently? Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure either. I just, I think I remember, I don't know if it was a recent thing or not, but it was, I I love watching Porzingis. Yeah, I do too. 
the whole just world so, loves watching he's him. so entertaining to watch because he's a skilled big man yeah and i don't know if the block he had on westbrook was recent or not but right. he slammed him down <laughs> like it was just like ooh. and as a rookie yeah westbrook if you get up in his face it's like he's the most grit dude yeah you're one of the most gritty guys in the league you never tell from how he dresses no but like if you shot him down man you're yeah. like looking out for some revenge he's all, all fashionable there. Oh, yeah, very fashionable with his, I don't know, like, white glasses and uh, <laughs> overalls. <laughs> but a bit back to the NFL. Yes. The I do like that the that Cam got past the uh, the Cardinals. Yeah. But with Brady, or uh, with the Broncos. The Broncos. Um, I read a couple of, I, guess I saw a headline or two that said, is this the worst quarterback that's got in that's gotten into a Super Bowl. No version of a quarterback. No. Not as in the worst player, because everyone knows Peyton Manning's legend. But yeah. like the at worst this point in his career, he's one. not where he was before. Yeah. I don't even think he could throw with a, as much power as he used to. But and, if you were watching that game, mm-hmm. like there was moments in that game where Peyton Manning ran to a first down. Yeah. Like this guy yeah. is he's he's pushing like he's fo- pushing 40. Like he's around 40 years old and here he is like he's running. Like you're afraid every time that Peyton Manning gets hit that he's going to be hurt. Yeah. Yeah. He's one of those guys that you really ooh and ah when he hits the ground. Yeah, and he twisted his way out of the pocket mm-hmm. and ran for a first down and just dived in for the first down and you're like, "Ooh, like he wants it." Yeah. You know he wants this Super Bowl. I love that. And uh what he said to Belichick at the end of it. Like I think this might be my last rodeo. Mhm. Yeah. Oh, yeah. My gosh. Yeah. There's... You love the good sportsmanship there. And mm-hmm. Belichick saying it was a pleasure. Belichick, th- yeah, he said he's gone as well, right? No, but Belichick is a... Uh... No, he's the coach for... Yeah, the coach for the the, pay- the Pats. Mm-hmm. But uh, Peyton Manning gave him the handshake and stuff, and he said this might be my right. last rodeo. Peyton yeah. Manning said to Belichick, he said it was a pleasure. Uh-huh. I like that. I like that. It's good sports. You love seeing that. So are we looking forward to the Super Bowl? I am ecstatic. Just because I, I got it right. Yeah. But... You can't help but think it might be one-sided. A little bit. Um, now, mind you, like, <sighs> the Panthers have such a, a strong offense. Like, they're, they're strong around team. But mm-hmm. but you saw what – you saw, like, if you were watching the Broncos-Pats game, you saw what the Broncos did to mm-hmm. the Patriots. They couldn't mm-hmm. – this is a team that's got the best defense. And it's a, it's a far cry from the last time that you saw the best defense versus the best offense. I don't know if the Pan- Panthers technically have the best offense. Mm-hmm. They might. Mm-hmm. But when the Broncos played uh, – when the Broncos played uh, the Seattle Seahawks a couple years ago. Yep. You saw it, and the defense just crushed them. Yeah. Right? So you never know. You never know. The Broncos might keep that game to, like, a very close score. I would but, define the Broncos as cagey right now. Yeah. They know what to do. Like, yeah. the a- the athleticism doesn't really compare, I don't think, to the Panthers. <laughs> in, in the broadcast, I can't... Uh, the names escape me. The broadcaster that was saying it says that Peyton Manning is now relying on his gumption. His gumption. His gumption to win. To that's get into the Super Bowl. That's a very broadcaster word right yeah, there. His gumption, his grit, his his smarts. So are we gonna are we gonna get some predictions? Are we gonna This one's tougher. <laughs> I'm gonna lay it on the line here. Okay. Alex is gonna lay it on the line. Okay. The we gotta queue up we gotta queue up your theme music. Yes. Where is it? Is it here? Yes, it's here. <laughs> In Josh Greeley pre- Dicks the Super Bowl. February 7th, Super Bowl. The Carolina Panthers beat the Broncos. And the best wings you've ever tasted are served up at Josh, Josh Greeley's house. Oh, don't say that. Everyone will be showing up. We're give out your address. It's only a all of our five, party. all of our five listeners. Will. Don't worry, we're already all coming. <laughs> if you're listening, you know where you can follow us and tweet along and send us in any sports topic that you might be thinking about? Do you know? Do you um, follow it? <laughs> Clubhouse CHMR on Twitter. I don't have my own Twitter. You don't really? No. no. I did, but I don't use it. Josh, it is 2016. I know. I know. That People got Twitter in like 2009. Well, I had Twitter. Behind the times, bro. Behind the times. <laughs> shame. Shame is your name. Shots fired. Shots fired. <laughs> shame. Shame is your name. We're at that point in the show. Is it time for a break? Where we give you some cool tunes. And uh, what do we got first? We have Coheed and Cambria first. Ooh. So we'll be right back, folks. Are the most exciting sequences of plays. You're listening to the Clubhouse. You're back to the program. The pro- Clubhouse program. at CHMR. 
which is brought to you by no one. <laughs> by Memorial University. Yeah, technically. Or by our tuition. Yeah. By our need for procrastination, so we do this instead of studying. Yeah. I'm wishing good luck to everyone out there on their midterms, on their assignments. Oh, that's coming up now in the next week. We're getting uh, we're some, getting into the semester right now. Starting to hit, yeah. Yeah, right in the face. <laughs> Katie to was, hit Katie Josh was telling us something oh. interesting. Uh, was I? Yes. Oh, say? interesting. You were saying that you wished the Stanley Cup could talk. Oh, yes. we yeah, we were having this conversation during the last break. I just, I feel like the Stanley Cup over the years would have some very interesting stories because oh, it goes home for is it 48 hours with each player something like uh, that it goes home for like a, mm-hmm. yeah and like i can only imagine the amount of things that have been drinking out of it and the amount of things done with it like <laughs> just if it could talk i feel like it would have the best stories to tell <laughs> i i'm like i'd be afraid to know i would be too but um, yeah. i think it would be cool actually i think i'd only be afraid to know if i was a player Right. As someone who will probably never win it, <laughs> yeah, it doesn't really I'd matter. be intrigued to know. <laughs> if I was going to touch it at some point, yeah. I'd probably want to know. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Yeah, for sure. Aside from that, I don't really care. Yeah. I would like to hear the stories. stories but they probably will not be released in best interest of the NHL. But, and I mean, how many years has the Stanley Cup been given out? Oh, my gosh. It's, it's going on a century, I would say. Around that, Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, it has a... How many players are on a team? It goes home with oh yeah, 30 yeah. people every year for 100 and years. It has stories, man. It's not even just the... Uh, it's not even just the players, too. Like, the, the management. Yeah, the coaches and everything. Everyone in the organization. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah, that's the thing, too. And that's one thing I, f- I always found weird, especially in, like, baseball. I think baseball is the worst example. They get championship rings. Broadcasters get the championship ring. Uh, <laughs> assistant, like assistant, assistant, assistant coaches get brought, get uh, championship rings. Yeah. Do you think that's? Um, I'd say for coaches and I all, think capacities, coaches fine. Coaches, coaches fine. makes sense. Um, <laughs> like else? I'm not trying to take anything away from broadcasters or anything. Like you do a good right. job, but <laughs> I don't I feel like sense, anything. I get the sense they'd agree with this. Yeah, like I don't, I don't feel like it's, it's not, it doesn't, it. <laughs> You're covering the team. It's not winning them a championship. Yeah, right? nothing like, you do if, okay, again, we're doing a bit of broadcasting right we're here, right now. We're broadcasting right now. But if I got Are we going to get championship rings, guys? Yeah, like if I, if I was like if broadcasting for the Toronto Maple Leafs and yeah. this may never happen in my lifetime, it probably won't. But if they ever do win a Stanley Cup and I got a Stanley Cup ring, I would still be like, this is cool, but what the heck? And then you'd throw in the garbage. <laughs> no, I wouldn't. <laughs> I would not. I'd probably cry. I'm crying right now. <laughs> He's getting so emotional. <laughs> Um, let's see. I have something non-sports related that I'm going to pull up right now that yes. I haven't uh, let you know about. So I stumbled across this weird video on the on the internet mm-hmm. uh, this week, yes. and um, again, this is nothing to do with sports. Mm-hmm. So just a little laugh here now. Yes, this is a couple of British kids in the hall of school, and they managed to really rile up a hall monitor. Would you like to hear it? Yeah. <laughs> he, he gets pretty upset to we're say the least. a sports break. Yeah, so I'm what? Go out No, now we're not going. <laughs> Wait, f- anyway. No! No! What the f? I'm getting really sick of you! <laughs> Get out! No! No! Get out! Get out! No! 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 Just Go me! No! He's pretty mad. Just the laughing too, like yeah, it's just disrespectful. <laughs> but he got he got us a new soundbite. There's, I was gonna say, I was like, there's definitely a new soundbite out of that. Two, there's two, two. Get out now! Get out now! <laughs> and two, this might be a good segue. Yeah, this is what the Cleveland Cavaliers said to David Blatt this week. Yeah, I'm getting really sick of you <laughs> because he was fired. Oh, I <laughs> I don't get it. No, I don't either. I Let's don't talk get about it. it. Yeah, I don't get it at all. There's a weird thing in all sports. There's a stigma around uh, the firing of coaches. The coach gets the blame, and it makes a bit more sense when, like, you're say your team, you're a team like the Anaheim Ducks, mm-hmm. who just came off of a, a very strong playoff run. Where they lost to the Chicago Blackhawks. Yes. In seven games, 
and they would have been considered favorites if they went to the final. Like, whoever's winning that series would probably win the championship. Absolutely. I was looking at that today, actually, that bracket. And then to start this season, they were on, like, the worst. Like, yeah. they, they had a horrible start to the season. And you didn't see Bruce Boudreau get fired. Mm-hmm. Right? But that's usually when you'd see a coach get fired in the NHL. <laughs> now, like, night and day, um, with the Cavs... This firing happened with the team in they were lead they're leading the the conference. The team is the number one team in the Eastern Conference. Yeah. The only team they're probably behind is what? The Golden State Warriors. Oh no. Oh, the only team they're behind as a total? Overall. I believe they're behind the Golden State Warriors, San Antonio Spurs, and OKC. Oh. So of course I, the Spurs are up there. And- I think OKC has one game over them. And the Spurs and Golden State Warriors are up by a significant portion. <laughs> Let's... Insanity. Yeah. Linsanity. I like Jeremy Lin. <laughs> Jeremy Lin's a cool guy. Coolest hair in the NBA. That's going to be a twit. A, yeah, a twitcher. A twitcher. That's a Twitter I think picture. you just coined a new phrase. And I didn't even mean to. I want another phrase? It'll... You I... coined. Woo! Um, that's, that firing really caught me off guard, though, and it hit home yeah. because... It's very similar to what happened with the Rockets with Kevin McHale. Kevin McHale did not have a great record going into the season, but he had the same record that he did when he made the Western Conference Finals. Yeah. So it wasn't justified. And there's videos of LeBron, like, um, everyone's saying, LeBron has so much power right now. Yeah. And, uh, like, he's almost the coach and the GM of the Cavs. He's, he has a lifetime partnership with Nike. He's a very powerful man. You- and there's, like, there's videos of him, like, uh, at one point, sitting in David Blatt's chair during the game. Uh-huh. Like, just being disrespectful, right? You wonder if there was a bit of, like, a... Friction. Head, yeah, a friction between... Oh, so they had the like, headbutting, a yeah, friction between yeah. the two. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Like, there had to have been. It Like, it's almost like you really had to dig for it, because aside from those, the, like, the couple of things I've seen, like, one time David Blatt was getting really mad with a, a referee, and he, you see LeBron give him a shove, but that's almost like, quiet down, we don't want you to get a technical foul for the team. Mm-hmm. Right? And now the situation where he's sitting in the coach's chair is a bit different. Yeah. And there's even rumors of them saying that uh, they were planning on throwing the game against the Trailblazers in sort of protest against the coaching situation. Yeah. And sure enough, soon after, Black got fired. So I don't know. There's an interesting uh, development, too, with that, with the All-Star game, isn't there? In what sense? Because uh, wouldn't, wouldn't he have been one of the... Uh... Oh yeah, I also can't. Ca- coaches, I, and they're they're saying now, who do you replace him with? Yeah, though no, the the replacement was the assistant coach. He's he's already been given a three year contract, so that leads you to believe that. But I mean, now does this assistant coach get to coach the All Star game? I'm That's not what sure I mean. how the All Star or who is actually coaching the All Stars. I'm, I'm not entirely sure how it works with the NBA too, but I just remember I was watching. I was I think it was uh, Tim and Sid. Tim and shout out. But I was, I think they were talking about it. It was like, it was along the lines of that. It was um, not knowing who the replacement coach would be. Because if it's a team thing, then you'd throw the new the new coach in there. But he wasn't, he wasn't the coach that coached them to this record. Mm-hmm. Like, he wasn't right. there for that. It confuses me. It really does. Yeah. And people have been saying, uh, it made a lot of news when LeBron, like, took coaching into his own hands during mm-hmm. some of the, the uh, clutch playoff games. There was videos of him, of Blatt drawing up a play, and LeBron was like, I'm not doing that, and he, he won the game afterwards. Mm-hmm. So t- if you do that time and time again, your players and your, you know, your, your peers on your team are going to think that you're the one to look, to, look to, not exactly. the coach, right? So there's, he, there comes a time where you're like, like, who should I listen to? The player's now the coach. And like it or not, people... LeBron James, one of the greatest this, of all time. He is, and th- this is this is a thing too. Um, this is why the coach is always expendable. Because yeah. how much does the coach get paid in comparison, right? Mm-hmm. The coach is not on contract. The coach is not your superstar player. A coach can always be replaced. Mm-hmm. But if a coach has that friction with say your superstar, the yeah. coach is going to go. Right. Ninety nine percent of the time. So, right. Yeah. So the only <laughs> the only uh, exception you'll see to that is Mike Babcock with Toronto Maple Leafs mm-hmm. because I think he's probably one of the highest paid people on that team. <laughs> well, he's the biggest superstar on that. <laughs> he team. is right now. He, he is. is. Like who 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 would not a single person, him? not a single person. As in Kadri, Ka- Kadri, and yet and yet you can't say that because Kadri's having a great year this year, and it's because mm. yeah he's being coached by Mike Babcock, Morgan Riley. 
future superstar. He's coached by Mike Babcock. He's having a great year. I saw something interesting. Um, we we're talking about. I think we were talking about uh, fighting in the NHL last week, and we were bringing up. Yes, we were because we were talking about like. Uh, it seems kind of a touchy subject to talk about. On Bell, let's talk mental health day. Yeah. But uh, the uh, Dion Phaneuf fought for the first time in a long time the other day. It's kind I, of cool to see. I wasn't sure if I I didn't see it. I don't think. <laughs> well, but, that's that. Yeah. The the Montreal Canadiens. Let's talk about that a little oh, bit. The Habs. <laughs> They're on a historical slide. And it confuses me, and it should confuse. I mean, there's obviously root causes to it, but like to go from a peak and leading the conference to this. Yeah. Here's your segue to actually this is the perfect one because you're talking about coaches. Yeah. Another example. Yes. Montreal yes, Canadiens yes. are on a horrible slide. This has been one of the worst of all time. Right? Yeah. The first the, so the last time that they lost back to back games to the last place team in the league, mm. which is Columbus right now, and they did two five to two games. Yeah. They were scored ten to, to four. Yeah, yeah. But the last time that happened to Montreal was against Toronto in the eighties. Really? Yeah. Wow. To lose back-to-backs to the last place team. That's an now, stat for you. The GM, Mark Bergevin, came, he came out and, and stated that they're not firing Michelle Terrian. Oh, He nice. said it's all on his job. He provides the players. I saw that. He took, he took complete responsibility for it. Mm. So now you're saying Michelle Terrian's job is 100% safe because Mark Bergevin can't come out now and be like, I changed my mind. Yeah. He's gonna have to stand with it. So now it does fall on him. He took he took the blame for it. So it's like what what? It's really weird what happens now. What happens now if this team just bottoms out and and they don't even finish last? Say they finish sixth, mm-hmm. like not far enough to get. They don't they don't get the pre like a premier top five pick. Yeah, but somewhere within like the bottom range of the ten, like right. the the lose lose situation. It is a lose lose because they don't get to pick up a potential superstar. Mm-hmm. But at the same time, they don't make the playoffs. Yeah, no playoff run. And, like, even if you're, like, the lower-seeded teams, too, like, it's kind of lose-lose as and, well. And from a team like that, like, like the Canadians who have been constantly in the hunt for a Stanley Cup the last few years, like, the, 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 the culture in Montreal is it's completely unacceptable for the team to be doing horribly. Yeah. And the fans there are losing their minds. I can only imagine. For, right. Like, looking at the, the record of yeah. the past month, Holy man! They're getting mediocre goaltending, and they can't score goals. Mm-hmm. Like you, sometimes, and this is this opens up another debate too about the Montreal. Can, like they rely, maybe they rely a bit too much on Carey Price. That's He's, what it is, and I I find it so weird how a system can be so focused on your goaltender being your MVP and like the best when he is gone. It's a completely different situation. Even the and players you have to adapt so much. The players' confidence, like they don't play the same way because they're. In their, I think in the back of their minds, they're always afraid that if this becomes a turnover, it goes back the other way. They're going to score. Yeah. As opposed to it being like mental. if carries a net. Yeah. He's gonna he's gonna have her back. Right. The confidence, the and then like the confidence, it bleeds in and it makes the defense want to push all all the harder. Right. Yeah. Plus, there's leadership stuff that goes on in the locker. room. And I think Harry Price is probably a big leader in that locker room. Yeah. And he's not there right now. And they had the Gallagher problem, and oh yeah, they're they're running into a lot, and now they're tops. I, I don't know if Patch right. They're they're tops. Their top goal scorer over the last few seasons, Max Pacioretty. I think he's hurt now. And, and it's, it's not like you can attribute this to like, okay, this just happened to be. Well, first of all, it's a load of lost games mm-hmm. within the past month. But like, you can't look at those games and say like, all of them were close, right? Like, no, a lot of them, all of them were out. in like in the hands of the Canadians. But yeah, a lot of them like, even like the Columbus ones are. It's insane because they're the worst team in the league. Mm-hmm. So is Montreal the worst team in the league? Right now, yeah. 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 They're uh, ever since... Sorry, I'd Montreal say, fans. We're not. Yeah. We're really not trying. We're not. I'm not to, uh, go I'm against not you this week, but we're I'm, with you for your uh, recovery. I'm. I'm sympathetic because I know how it feels. <laughs> the Toronto Leafs Maple Leafs fans. Yeah. 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 <laughs> over and over again. Mm-hmm. It does. It sucks. It. <laughs> yeah. But the worst part about it now is you got to deal with the fans of all the other teams just kind of poking you. That's the thing, Crying, too. right? That's the worst part. Just hide under your covers. Got to hide from the Detroit fans. Just hide They're spoiled under. rotten. Yeah? <laughs> I don't think they missed the playoffs in, like, what, 20-something years? Mm-hmm. Well, they don't have Babcock anymore, so you can always say that. Uh, we're going to see. I'm really hoping. <laughs> you think hoping... he goes back? No, no. I, I, no, I hope that they, they just missed the playoffs once. 
Oh, just that, to see, yeah. ju- just to see how like like, just to see the error error does not compute in all the fans' faces. Like they're like, what's going on? That's so <laughs> cynical. Just, I just they're successful, so I just want them to fail once. <laughs> hey, that's that's a very common <laughs> sports fan, you know. But there's there's mentalities mindset. that other a lot of fans of certain teams they they pick on another fan base due to like the fan mentality. Like this is the reason yes. why a lot of people. A lot of people that are fans of, say, Montreal or Toronto or even Detroit, even like a bunch of other teams, they they do not like Boston. Yeah, right. there are some terrible fan bases out there. I will admit Listen, that. And this, I don't. And, know, I'm not even saying in general the whole fan yeah. base, but like culture of Boston cap. created. Yeah. When they won the cup, and like those years, as they yeah. were just the big bad Bruins. And don't I poke think... the bear. <laughs> like they were just like the dirty like. The Milan, like he's not even there anymore. But Milan Lucic and like the dirty players, the Brad Marchand, he looks smug all the time, and he can score on you, but he just gets under the team's skin, right? Like that's the reason why. And then the people, are, every other team, is just like they hate the Bruins. That's what the Bruins are. They are dangerous. Oh yeah. Um, what was I going to say? Well, it is halfway through the show right now, so I guess we should uh, give the people some more music. The music. What do you got now? We're gonna play some trues mm. from their latest album. Here is Where There's Love. You know, this is really your chance to be an armchair quarterback. You're listening to the clubhouse. Hey! Ba da ba 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 da 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 You like that? <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna tell you something interesting that happened in the world of tennis this weekend. Yes. And you know it. We're going off book here because we don't talk a lot about tennis. And to be completely honest, I don't know too much about tennis. So I'm going to read a news bit. And yeah. uh, now I'm not going to be able to tell you much about it. I can talk a little bit about it. I've but, been uh, brushing up on my tennis lately. Oh, nice. <laughs> Have you been hitting the courts? Uh, no, I can't. Have you been do that. stringing your racket? No, I can't do any of that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, here we go. This is from Tennis Canada, Twitter at Tennis Canada. I really hope this is reliable. I, I think it is because TSN ret- retweeted it. But, anyways. Still undefeated in 2016, and into his second Grand Slam semifinal, Raonic defeats Monfils, Monfi, 6-3, 3-6, 6-3, 6-4. There you go. How about that? A bit dominant. And also, he reached his first ever Australian Open. Ah. Uh-huh. And will face Andy Murray. Andy Murray. The British Beast. We'll just call him that. <laughs> is that is <laughs> that actually, I know nothing about I was gonna say, is that actually like his nickname nope. or we just created it? Nope. So from now on, we're actually calling Andy Murray the British Beast. Yep. I really hope he's actually British. Yeah. <laughs> okay. I'm pretty sure he is. I, okay, I'm almost positive on that. I don't know too much about tennis. But Andy Murray, as I type it into Google, is from Oh yes. The he UK. Is. Yeah, definitely. The first picture there was him with a flag. So <laughs> No, he's from Glasgow. Oops. That's no, Scotland. Scotland. Okay. Um, Scotland till it's still technically Britain. Yeah. Not that mm. I want the Scottish to beat me up about that. Because <laughs> I All mean... our Scottish listeners yeah. out there. <laughs> it's all part of Britain. I also have another stat that I want to read you. Now this is this is going back into the hockey. Um career comparison. Yarmer Yager oh, I saw versus this. The Toronto Maple Leafs. Yes. <laughs> Goals, Yager. 737. This is the current team. Yes. Yeah. The Leafs, 822. Uh, assists, Yager has 1,098. The Leafs, 1,056. Y- <laughs> Yager, points, 1,835. The Leafs, 1,878. How about that? <laughs> There's a reason he's an all star. Oh my God, Yarmir Yager's a legend. Yeah. He is. And the fact that, like, how do you, like, do you have the age, what his actual current age is right now? His current age? We have Google. He's on the other side of 40. Yeah. Yeah. Like, on the and later he's, side of 40. And he's, he's still doing some pretty cool stuff. He's playing. He's he's all-star captain. Mm-hmm. Now, do you think that's to do with the fans going insane for him? Um, well, they should, though. Like, yeah. 43. It's so fun to watch now with Yarmir Yager because... Every it's all it seems like every game he plays, mm-hmm. he steps up the all time points ladder. So yeah. you get to watch like every time he scores goals or like gets points in a game, it's like how much closer is he to this player and that player? Right. I think he's like ranked in points. I'm pretty sure he's probably in the top, like he's in the top five of all time. Yeah, yeah. yeah. He's been man. He, he's he just keeps kicking around. Like yep. 
is he showing I don't even know like is he showing any signs of retirement has he mentioned he, retirement he they've asked him and he actually wants to play until he's 50 <laughs> That's like it's it. insane. That's insane. It's like Gordie Howe 2.0. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. Like the last player I think that played the, the latest like that was probably Chris Chelios. Mm-hmm. And he was like 46, 47. Yeah. So that's... Yeah. Like that's... It, it, <laughs> this is one of those things that you you got to at least tune in to watch the dude. Watch him before he retires. And see, yeah, see it now. Um, but this is also like a classic example of um, dedication to the sport. Yeah, but is he and, necessarily one of those dudes that treats his body like yes, like a temple? He is, um, like Bernard Hopkins. That that's what it is. And you know what? If like it's it's crazy, but it's true. How much more uh, career longevity you can get if you're yeah, definitely. If you're that healthy, you're that good to yourself because it's crazy. And you know, how much of a cool mullet you can grow? Yes, yes. Well, he definitely doesn't have any hair problems. Did he grow that out after? He said um, he was going to, but I don't I, think he did. I don't he? know. Maybe he's in the process still. His hair's a bit longer, I think, right now. Or maybe he's wearing a bald calf until the All-Star game. Will he's wearing a bald calf. He's going to unveil it. He's going to unveil his mullet at the All-Star game. You heard it first. And then he's going to win the All-Star game. Y- Yarmir Yager versus everybody else. <laughs> and he's just going to win. Now, they talk about Carey Price playing an integral role. If you pull Yager out, the team's dead. For the Florida Panthers? Yeah. I don't know. No, I'm just being. I'm. I'm being. He's, uh, it's over exaggerated. It's funny that no. It's but it's it's true to think that too a little bit because I think that ever since Yager went to Florida, that team has developed like all the young players have developed so well. Like he's been so good leadership as a leader. Mm-hmm. Definitely. Yeah, it's crazy. And also, Yarmir Yager did miss a couple years of the NHL. Like in his, like I'd say in some of his prime playing years. Because he went to play in the KHL. If he stayed here, like, he could be challenging even more records. It's crazy to think that... Yeah, yeah that's the thing, too. Like, years off. How many you goals? Could how be, many potential goals have you missed? Assists. You, aside from Gretzky, you could be seeing the best player of all time. Yeah? Still in the NHL right now. Yes. Yes, yeah, yeah, still there, yeah. Yeah. yeah um, another alive. one to talk about breaking records right now go, as going up. It's fun to watch. There's two players that you could still see this. Um, Jerome McGinley is one of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because he's still putting up goals. Now, he's at the end. What milestone did he reach the other um, week, month? Did he 600? hit 600? I think 600. I think that's it, the number. That's... It was. And um, that was a little while ago. And Ovechkin, he hit 500 officially. The difference, though, is Ovechkin has got pretty much still half his career yeah. left. So you're looking at a player that's Cap already at fans five. would like to think. He's at five. doing fine now. Yeah. He's going to spend the most, the, pretty much the most of the rest of his career with the Capitals, I think. I don't think he's going anywhere. Unless it's like a thing where he's really not finding his championship there and he needs to seek other places. Yeah. Kind of like what Kessel's doing. It's different. Well, it's different in hockey because Kessel. <laughs> but he's not having that, much success with it. It wasn't that. It, that wasn't Kessel's choice, though, right? That, that trade was the Leafs being like, we need to rebuild. Yeah. And, and they did it, it for them. Sense. But. Let's say players like that. Like, the NHL is a little different. In the NBA, you see guys like LeBron, or they'll be like, I'm going here mm-hmm. for my chance. Or, like, I'm going to well, do this. Well, dudes like LeBron this, have the pull and, to do it. Yeah, and this, well, and also this is, like, this is the best opportunity for me to win. Not with the Cavs, it wasn't. Yeah. He yeah. should have stayed on that Miami Heat team. That was a cool team. And they were really good for the longest time. Yeah. That's well, how many did they win afterwards? They win two? They got two. They got two. So he still got his championships. I think he wanted to prove he can go somewhere else and... And he wanted to go home. He wanted to go home. He had something to owe Cleveland, which he really didn't. No. And I don't know if he's... I don't even think he's coming close to a championship. See, now, I got a question for you. Warriors around. Uh, You'll know this more than me, especially with the NBA and how it works after drafting. But how long, like... How how long did uh, he spend in Cleveland initially, the first time around? Like... A good few years. So, like, is there a certain amount of time that a player has to... Like, is there a restriction... On a drafted player, how much time they have to spend with one team? I'm pretty sure it depends on the contract and yeah. the magnitude of the talent that the player yeah. is, depending on their draft position and all, all that yeah. kind of stuff. He was in the, uh, Cleveland for since, or he started his career in 2003 mm-hmm. and left in 2010. Okay, so he spent seven years there. So that makes sense because um, the NHL has that in place, right? Like you have your entry level contract, yep. which is usually maxed at three years. 
and it, it has a cap on it of I say with bonuses around a million and a bit per year annual salary but players don't become unrestricted free agents so they can't just leave a team until they're what 27 years old mm-hmm. so you're staying like you're gonna spend that almost 10 years with the team yeah unless they trade you That's prior right. with one hockey team right if you're a good player you're staying there so you're going to see a lot more. Like you see in the NHL now, you see players that get drafted. If they're really good and they get drafted by a team, they're going to spend their whole careers there. Mm-hmm. That's always what happens. And I'm pretty sure – now, we got to get the controversy. But going back to Cleveland, I believe where they stand right now with the whole – this is kind of linking back to the whole David Black and fired conversation. Yeah. They've won against every team in the NBA except for two. That's that's one way to look at it. They've lost to the Spurs. They've, they've lost – They've lost to the Warriors. And these are the two best teams. Mm-hmm. Like, the Spurs have been perennial, like, every year, annually. Mm. A it's top like, team. It's like the Red Wings. Yeah. And and you, you give it to them because this is a, a well-coached team the that has all the right... Team. And they have the right pieces. Yeah, like all got, over the place. Just it's not necessarily built. like a big star, mm. but there's just, like, the pieces are in place. Yeah. That's what it is. That's when you see, like, a team challenges for a long period of time because it's not one superstar that you got to pay right a boatload of money that's what i get really excited about with the raptors because i feel the raptors are that way right now right now yeah for sure but kyle lowry's man with skinny kyle lowry is <laughs> getting buckets yeah he's he's doing very well for himself i think now quickly before controversy because we don't have too much time left hmm. uh controversy or uh blah, blah, blah. the spurs and the warriors faced off this week and the Warriors bet them by 30 points Ooh. 30 points that's a big 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 margin now don't hit me but I'm not sure is Steph Curry back yes is he oh yeah yeah he was only he was gone for a very brief period I know I wasn't sure because I remember him being hurt I wasn't and I haven't been following the Warriors yeah very but closely he is back and uh no signs of slowing down for him. Of course. That, that injury did nothing for him. 120 to 90 was the final score. So. He's definitely the most impressive yeah. player in the NBA. Oh, by far right now. Yeah. And I love how that changes, though. I love how from year to year, um, you're at this point where the sport has been developed so much mm. that you have so many good top elite talent that one year someone can be re- like the, the premier player, and then the next year it just switches. I think and you get another one. right now we might be into a situation where Curry's going to start to take over. Yeah. I do think we're in that. But I, there is a lot of superstars that are fun to watch spread yeah. all across the league. And, you, of oh, course, you got the rookies, Chris Tess, Porzingis. But I'd say, I say this in all sports, right? Like, you see a big change now on a smaller scale because I don't know football as much. But even, like, running backs and foot, like football. And we were talking about how their career longevity is a lot shorter. But, like, all of a sudden, from one year of winning a Super Bowl, Marshawn Lynch just... Yeah. Just crap. Like, he's he's apparently, like, close to retirement. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, well, you were saying that last week. I think Mitch was telling us. Yeah. And then all you see other running backs, and even ones that are older. Like, Jamal Charles is still killing it. He's older. Adrian Peterson. Right. But I was going to go with the NHL as well. For the... Uh... Every year... For however long, everyone would say Crosby is the top player in the game. Uh huh. Sidney Crosby is the best NHL player. It's not so evident now. Hands down, best. This year, you look at it, you would never even know. You, if you look know at the that people say that, yeah. Well, you never. Well, no. This year, you would never even. Yeah, you'd never even know that he was a top player. Yeah. Because, and you look at Patrick Kane, and they're like, "Where the hell did he come from?" Yeah, like, and comparing him to those other guys that are in that spot right now yeah. and being talked about. Now and I I like this comparison too because I I think it's actually pretty similar to the whole because it's stylistically different mm. and I think Patrick Kane has more of a flair to him definitely to me to me I it's almost like the Steph Curry yeah there's a bit of that change for me like because he is a bit more like technically skilled yeah. just amazing amazing like you can't even get the puck from Patrick Kane he's the guy has it glued watch. to his stick you know what we didn't get to this week which what? we're getting to right now what is it this week in that wasn't loud enough for me. I'm going to try it again. Do it again. This week in... Controversy. <laughs> so we're we're going back to the NBA, and we're going to talk about Blake Griffin this mm-hmm. time. And I don't know the full story, or in the story in full detail. Oh, yes. This is the... But it came out 
that uh, Blake Griffin is going to miss a good bit of time because he broke his hand. Now, they suspended him too, didn't they? Yes. The team did, right? Yes. <coughs> now, so everyone was for, first looking at this news bit and being like, okay, he's injured and uh, or like that's it's bad, but um, he's injured and we'll just have to wait through it. But how he got injured is ridiculous. Do you know how he got injured? Have you heard? He punched someone yeah. on the team or something. It was someone in like management of the team. His was... his fist was broken on the one of the I believe the guy's title was the equipment manager. Yeah. How about that? Like, I you break your hand in basketball. Why did you like jump and yeah like? Hit your hand off the rim or, or something? Or like a finger or something from... From a pass, like yeah. a hard pass. But no, he punched someone in the clubhouse. Now, he, <laughs> that suspension, does that, it, was that... Is that just for the team's way of saying, like, we got to enforce this, but does that take away from his time while injured? Like, does that, do they add that on when he comes back? Or is it just counting while he's hurt? That's a good question, actually. Cause, yeah, because you can't... <laughs> I can see that as the Clippers' way of being like, we're punishing him, but not really, because we need him. It's Blake Griffin. Yeah. But uh, actually, they've been doing quite quite fine without Blake Griffin. Oh, yeah. They're a, they're, I they're think, a good team, anyway. Number four? They're in the four spot, right? No, no, that, uh, five spot, I think. There's some right big now. names on that team, as well. Chris Paul, mm -hmm. DeAndre Jordan. Yeah, there's, that's a good team. Uh, but I got, I got a lot of uh, Clippers in my fantasy basketball. Ooh, fantasy <laughs> basketball, you say. But, I like uh, to see sports. I can't find the sound drop. <laughs> letting everyone down. I but, got this one. There you go. Fantasy so, basketball. <laughs> <laughs> so how long is he out for? Now, like, what's Four the to six prognosis? weeks. Four to six weeks is what I saw. But you raise a good question in that is that is that his injury window yeah. or is that his suspension? That's what I want to know if it was and both. And like... you'd like to think that they're not intertwined because that would be really greasy. It would be. It, it would be the Clippers' way of saying, like, we're enforcing, like, our club rules. Yeah. And, like, this... Our values. Yeah, our values. But at the same time, we kind of want them to be playing. <laughs> yeah. They've been... But, yeah, it's, it, it's weird because they've been doing so, f like, fine without them. So I honestly think they're comfortable with Suspending him serving it. the suspension. Did they let you know how many games it was, or...? For for the I, suspension? That's the thing I don't know. Yeah, that's what I mean. I'm not, I'm not sure. Did they call you up, Alex? <laughs> did they call you not up and ask to tell you? No, they did not. Hello, Alex Berry. Doc Martin. This did is not the call NBA me. calling. Oh. This is basketball calling. <laughs> Hello, basketball. <laughs> How's it going, basketball? What do you got for me today? We got Blake Griffin's uh, <laughs> suspension news. There, um, there's one thing that's funny though is the guy he punched. I think it would be a lot more of a big deal mm -hmm. if it was okay. You you hear the name or the title equipment manager and yeah. you think that's probably some you know some some old guy maybe some kid helping him out in the clubhouse but apparently it's a dude that blake hung out with a lot there's okay. a lot of instagram pictures and tweets of them like at clubs and stuff oh so there's some behind I mean, the scenes stuff here it's a bad situation yeah. don't Not punch anyone that's blind to your team yeah, but don't punch anyone in general, kids. Yeah, don't just do don't punch people unless you're a boxer and you're actually boxing. Fair enough, you're right. <laughs> because I wouldn't say don't punch anyone. They get in the ring and just get punched. Exactly. <laughs> yeah, that that would be a problem. Um, but like you know, don't punch someone in the organization. You can't do that. You can't do that. You really can't. But um, if like you see what I mean though, yeah. with digging a bit deeper, like if you're taking pictures with. This guy on Instagram, it leads you to believe that you're hanging out with him. There was definitely, I think there was definitely a personal, you're not going to know about it. No. I don't think we're going to know about it, but there's definitely a personal reason. Mm -hmm. It was something, maybe a falling out or something. But one last thing before, I don't know how much time. Um, we got about two minutes. Two minutes? Okay. Uh, controversial. Yeah. Sean Horkop, the Anaheim, du Anaheim Ducks. I've got heard suspended this. 20 games. What? In the NHL. For, um, how did I not hear about this? For use of uh, PEDs. What kind of PEDs? You know? But that's the thing. This is a no. The NHL cracks please, down. Wait, please define PEDs. Performance enhancing, performance drugs. enhancing drugs. Got it. Okay. Now, not every drug on this list that's t like maintained by a league is not necessarily like it's not like a hey steroids. It's just but things you're not allowed to put in your body as an athlete. Makes sense. One of them is, um, is it? Let me take a quick guess. Is it blood doping? There, I think that's included. 
in this. this is, I don't know what it was, but it. with him, it was uh, it was it was his own fault. Now he admitted to it, but it wasn't. And now the NHL is so good at this because I feel like they slap on these rules and they crack down hard. And that's why you don't see. I don't think you see a lot of um, right. issues with it in the NHL. But he was slapped on twenty games because he used something that wasn't authorized by the NHL um, when he was injured. To speed up his inj- his healing process, right for so like recovery hurt. reasons. Recovery reasons, mm. but because it was blood tested, and he came out and said it was his own fault, he should have been aware of what he was putting in his body, mm-hmm. and so he respects the NHL's decision. But he's suspended twenty games for it. It's not the first time you've seen it either. It's happened a couple times in the NHL. Interesting, but I don't think. Do you see that in any other sport where it's like a something? Because before I remember years ago, I think Jose Theodore got tested. It was to do with uh, hair growth. <laughs> Like like something he hair used growth for hair or something hair growth yeah is what he got dinged for yeah and yeah he was in trouble for it or, or I got least, dinged for tums I don't know if he actually got suspended or anything but it was in the news it was a big deal that's something you don't want to get dinged for yeah because it's slightly embarrassing too yeah right uh, two things two things before we go yeah speedy Boogie Cousins Demarcus Cousins dropped fifty six points this week in nice. two games he scored over a hundred points this week so that's insane. Do also, have, do I have him? <laughs> I think you might actually. <laughs> That's why I'm winning now. <laughs> um, and the Raptors are on a nine-game winning streak. So watch those Raptors. Yes, yes. they're doing great. They got Be the North. Loads of personality, loads of talent. You're listening to Clubhouse. You can always follow us on Twitter. We're gonna leave you with at Clubhouse CHMR. A bit We're of gonna Matt leave Mays you with Matt Mays downtown. Downtown by Matt Mays. Thanks for listening, everyone. Jesus loves the world. Go, 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 go. Bingo game is ready to roll.